Okay, this is lesson 21. We are talking about factoring and order of operations. You've got your two objectives here. So our goals are to make sure we can simplify an expression by factoring and to simplify an expression by using the order of operations. Now this part we've already done. We're just going to kind of review and add some stuff into it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, fun fact of the day is that woodpecker scalps, porpoise teeth, and giraffe tails have all been used as money before. This is a porpoise, kind of looks like a dolphin, except its nose is a little wider instead of longer. So a dolphin's nose would be a little longer than that one. All right, here's example one, part A, factor A times X plus A times Y, and then part B is to factor six times X plus nine. Okay, now factor means to pull out a common factor of both things that you're adding or subtracting. So figure out what they have in common, okay, what they've been multiplied by. So on this one, this is a times x plus a times y. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite it like that. a times x plus a times y. And we know those are being multiplied because there's no sign in between the letters. Okay. Now when we factor, we need to take out a common factor. And we're going to write this like a distributive property problem starts where we're going to have a number on the outside of some parentheses and two things in the inside added or subtracted. Okay, So on the outside, I'm going to go ahead and write down this common factor. So A is the common factor. That goes outside some parentheses. Okay, Then on the inside, I'm going to put what's left over when I take out the A's. So if I take out the A out of A times X, I've just got X left. And then i got a plus sign. And if I take out a out of a times y, I just have y left. Okay, so there's my factored expression. And you can see how this looks like our distributive property problems look. So it's kind of backwards distributing. Okay, because if I were to take a times x, that's ax. And then I put a plus sign, and then a times y is ay. All right, let's do example b. So I'm factoring 6 times x plus 9. Okay, well, when I factor, I want to pull out a common factor of both of those. Okay, so one way you could do this is to make a factor tree of each one. Okay, let's go ahead and break down 6 and make a factor tree. We just know that's 2 times 3. Okay, and then 9 is 3 times 3. So another way I can write 6 times x is 2 times 3 times x. 2 times 3 times x plus, and then 9 is 3 times 3. Okay, if we look at each of these things, I see one thing in common. I see the number 3 that is in common. Okay, and only one 3. I know this one's got two 3's, but this one does not. Okay, this term does not have a 2 or an x either. So this number 3 is what goes on the outside of my parentheses. And then on the inside, I put what's left over, 2 times x, so that's 2x, a plus sign, and on the other side, I got 3. And there's my factored answer. Again, it looks like a distributed property problem looks. And if I were to check my work, if I distributed this back out, 3 times 2x is 6x's, and 3 times 3 is 9, and there's a plus sign in between them. Okay, so again, we're pulling out a common factor. Now, if you could have seen that 3 is the highest number that goes into both of those without doing a factor tree, then that's fine. Okay, you could have just pulled out 3, and then I would ask myself, well, 3 times what equals 6x's? And I know 3 times 2x equals 6x, and then 3 times what equals 9, and that's 3 times 3. Okay, so that's where this comes from. Let's move on to some more PEMDAS, order of operations review. Okay. Now, we got some more complicated examples here. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite down this problem like it looks here. Okay, so we got 20 minus 2 times 3 squared plus 7 plus plus 8 in parentheses divided by 5. Okay, and now we got to do PEMDAS here, order of operations. So the first thing I'm seeing is parentheses. Okay, I only have one thing in parentheses, so I'm going to rewrite down everything else. Plus, 7 plus 8 is the parentheses, that's 15, divided by 5. Okay, 
Okay, now again, I can write down PEMDAS here. This is a review on that. Okay, sorry, my stylus is kind of going bad again. We'll try to keep it going as good as we can. Now, cited parentheses. Next thing is exponents. Well, I see one thing of exponents. So I'm going to rewrite down everything else. 20 minus 2 times 3 squared is 9 plus 15 divided by 5. That's the end of my exponents. Next thing is multiply and divide, and I go from left to right. Okay? Well, I see a multiply here coming before a divide. So I'm going to go ahead and write 20 minus 2 times 9 is 18 plus 15 divided by 5. Well, then I still have a divide right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 20 minus 18 plus 15 divided by 5 is 3. That takes care of multiplying and dividing. Then I go addition and subtraction from left to right. So subtraction comes first here. 20 minus 18 is 2. And 2 plus 3 is 5. Okay, quick review there on an order of operations problem. Let's add into this a little more. Okay, here, look at all this stuff we've got. So I've got 10 minus... Then I've got this thing called a brace, 8 minus, then i got this thing called a bracket, 6 minus, then i got parentheses, 5 minus 3, then I end my parentheses, I end my bracket, and I end my brace. Now again, here's PEMDAS, okay? Now this is why I called it GEMDAS to start with, for a problem like this, okay? Because... These are grouping symbols. When I see a bunch of grouping symbols like this, I gotta look in the entire outside thing here. Okay? So I'm gonna look at all of this grouping symbol and do everything in these braces before I can do this 10. Okay? Well, in the braces, I see more grouping symbols. I got this, and then I see these brackets here. So I've got to do everything inside the brackets before I can worry about this. Well, then in the brackets, I see more grouping symbols. I see parentheses. So the very first thing I need to do is those parentheses there. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite everything else. 10 minus brace, 8 minus bracket, 6 minus. Now my parentheses, 5 minus 3, that's 2. Okay. Now, I just did everything inside the parentheses, so I don't need to write the parentheses again. I'm just going to close up my bracket and close up my brace. Now, again, I'm looking in the whole brace here, and in the brace, I see brackets. So i got to do the brackets first. So I'm going to keep the 10 and the brace and the 8 and the minus, and in the bracket, 6 minus 2 is 4. And that's all that's left in the bracket, so now I'm just going to close up my brace. Okay, well, I still got to do the rest of the grouping symbols, so my braces. So I'm going to keep 10 minus, and then 8 minus 4 is 4. And after all that, my answer is 6. All right, and let's go on to the last screen of examples. Okay, now, again, with order of operations, call it GEMDAS. You can keep calling it PEMDAS if you want, as long as you understand G means grouping symbols. Well, here, okay... We remember what this is. This is absolute value. That acts like a grouping symbol. So I've got to do everything inside this absolute value here. So I'm going to keep my absolute value sign and do what's inside there first. 2 minus 7. Okay, well that's 2 and negative 7. That makes negative 5. Then this says the absolute value of negative 5, which is just positive 5. Okay, square roots right here. Square roots are another grouping symbol. So before I can do the square root part, I've got to do everything inside the square root first. Well, 9 plus 16 is 25. And then i got the square root of 25. We know the square root of 25 is 5 and negative 5. Because 5 times 5 is 25, and negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. Well, then again, this fraction bar also acts like a grouping symbol. So I've got to do what's on top first. 12 times 12 is 144. And then I've got to do what's on bottom. 3 plus 3 is 6. And then I've got to go ahead and do 144 divided by 6, because that's what the fraction bar means. Well, 6 goes in there twice. And 6 goes in there four times. 
I've got 0 for remainder, so I'm done. My answer is 24. Okay, that's your quick review for order of operations here. Make sure you understand all these different kinds of grouping symbols and that really long problem with the braces and the brackets and the parentheses and how that works. And that is the end of the lesson, so if you have any questions, make sure you ask. Otherwise, good luck on this lesson and happy homeworking.